RAM is more faster, more better. TLDR, basically yes. Good afternoon, morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech if you're new here I'm Reese of the 4-piece warranty walkie triple XL and I've been given some very nice memory modules of the new Kingston Fury Beasts to test out and put them against our test bench memory in the 8 Data XPGs. The 8 Data XPG is 5200 CL38 and these are 5600 CL40 and 5600 CL38. So we are expecting more faster to be more better. But is it by a factor that you would want to invest in that? Is the cooling performance up to scratch, etc, etc. We're going to try and answer all of those questions for you today. So we're going to start off with what's in the box because you actually get a quite a cute little package over here from Kingston with the Furies. You get the daintiest and cutest little manual I've ever seen under the sun and a nice little Kingston Fury sticker and obviously two separate randoms. The heat sinks on these are not the biggest I've ever seen and that's actually going to work for some people. So if you need a low profile setup for your cooling, because you've got like an AK620 deep cool that sticks over the randoms, then these are going to be absolutely perfect. You'll notice compared to the A Data XPGs, they're a lot shorter. And in this case, shorter is better, am I looking at you? However, they're not as beefy. And I think for long term cycles, that might just be a problem. It wasn't in any of the tests we did, uh, but it might be in a long-term cycle sort of proposition. And what I did with the benchmarking was I made absolutely sure to do them all in the same day so the environmental factors wouldn't vary too much. And they were all done on Monday this week with the Kingston Fury set. So as far as throttling and temperature control problems, they didn't really have any. Even though these are quite a lot smaller and thinner on the heatsink, there wasn't any noticeable performance degradation from that. The only performance degradation I did have, unfortunately, were temperature fluctuations regarding the CPU itself. So you could actually take some of this with a pinch of salt and say that the second set of tests for the CL38 would probably have been even slightly better if the temperature was better and the CPU could have run at a slightly cooler operate like ambient temperature. It probably varied, but like as much as 10 degrees Celsius throughout the day. So you could say that they would actually be even maybe slightly faster than they were. So without further ado, let's jump into some performance results. So for Cinebench, you're not gonna see a massive performance gain. It's going to be much of a muchness between the different randoms. And where AAA gaming is concerned, it's pretty much the same as well. In a lot of instances with AAA gaming, it's very specific actually to GPU, like Metro is a good example of that, where it's pretty much all GPU reliant. My 3070 Ti, whatever I've paired it up with, has almost always given the same result regardless of the processor. Even testing 14700K versus the 13600K, is we saw similar sort of results with that. But looking at esports titles and a little bit older rendering engines like Unreal 4 with Vermintide 2, for example, we do see significant performance uplifts. I'm talking like 10% in some cases. In other areas, about say five to maybe 15%, depending on the 1% lows, etc. it's still going to give you performance uplift. So that's kind of congruent with what we would hope to see, which wasn't always the case. If you looked back to like 9th and 10th gen Intel and even onto AMD of yesteryear, 3200 megahertz was like the peak performance and everything after that gave you quite diminishing returns. But now more faster is actually more better. So it leaves the consumer, you guys, in a position where you actually are going to gain some performance, especially on a single core type application. And that might be worth it for some of us who are doing some esports titles and other sort of gaming. And I did premium DDR4 versus DDR5 a while back and had 4,000 megahertz chips against 4,800 mega DDR5, and it didn't make that much of a difference. But that was on 12th generation Intel as well. So now with the 13th gen test bench setup, I'm already seeing that, yes, more faster is more better. So you can assume that going into the future with 14th gen being very similar and with the AMD 7000 series now benefiting from high-speed DDR5, that more faster is going to be more better. In the Kingstons, even though the heatsink is smaller, they didn't suffer any performance degradation. Some of these tests go on for more than 10 minutes and I was running them absolutely back to back to try and make sure 
that they wouldn't then degrade in performance. But every single test from the CL38 was better than the CL40. So it tells me that there's no problem with this heatsink, even when it is going into a higher megahertz range. So these are actually a little bit overkill and just kind of adding some weight to your system at the end of the day. Sometimes overkill is nice, don't get me wrong. These are still really good chips and that's why they the defaults for our test bench. But if you were looking at some Kingston Furies, then you really don't have to worry about any cooling performance. And I'm quite ecstatic to report that, to be honest. Kingston was away for a while and they had a couple of hiccups here and there with their DDR4. And it's nice that all of these just plugged in. I set the XMP and I got to test benching and they did exactly what I was expecting them to do. The speeds were very much in line with the expectation as well. I think they were getting like uh, like 5,586 megahertz. So right on the cusp of that 5,600 megahertz rating. And the timings, is, like I say, all worked out perfectly. There is AMD Expo and Intel XMP certified kits. So you can make sure that you get the one that's right for your system. Anywho, that's all I have for you on the Kingston Furies. If you have enjoyed this review, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side. Bye.